and welcome back to TLT Talks. We have a very exciting show for you today. Things are changing, seasons are changing, rates are changing, regulations are changing, so many new things. And we thought we'd have somebody come on to talk about uh, a relevant topic. Um, I like to As the principal and CEO of Balanced Living Development, a very exciting, uh, a very exciting new development firm. He's the principal and the CEO. He's been developing for nearly 15 years. Mr. Cody. Good morning, sir. Hey, Mr. Lipman. Good, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I was just letting the world, the world know that we'll be talking to the principal and CEO of BLD, Balanced Living Development. You have been developing for over a decade now. We're coming close to two, but I don't want to date you or myself. <laughs> um, he's got a background in finance and investment. I've known Mr. Cody for over two decades. He's kind of done it all. We just finished selling out a new development for him in Fort Greene that went incredibly well. And now we have projects coming up in Astoria and Prospect Heights. He's got some building sales happening in Williamsburg. I could go all day long listing his resume. But rather than doing that, uh, my dear friend, what would you like to share with the folks that are going to watch this? Um... Well, first of all, hello, <laughs> good morning. Mr. Litvak and the Litvak team, good morning. Thank you for having me on. It's an honor. Um, yeah, about 13 years in the business. Um, been doing business in general for a very long time. These are really trying times. We've been um, doing our best going through them. Um, been fairly successful, thank God. And uh, hard work, dedication, most importantly, I learned this from day one, you have to buy it right. Hmm. If you buy the land right, yeah. then, you know, you're making money. But um, be careful, you know, and um, I guess to say about me is that uh, I, I do a lot of due diligence before, you know, they say measure it a thousand times before you mm -hmm. cut it. We measure it, we look at it, we explore it. We try to do as much as possible as we can prior to buying the land. We speak to the architects and, you know, then we execute. And uh, I guess I'm just very, very meticulous about what I do. I love what I do. I wake up every morning and I'm very happy because I'm doing what I love. No, I, love you know, that. I love that. I guess that's it. I love that. I love that. So for anyone out there that, you know, I'm we're always getting questions like where, is there anywhere good to invest? Is there anything interesting? If I have to invest money and that's how I hear the CEO talk, I'm immediately excited. Actually, Bezos just put a clip out, or maybe it was, maybe it's not new. I just saw it. But, you know, I was scrolling and this the clip came up. He goes, I don't understand this principle of work-life balance. If your if your day-to-day -day is so bad that you need balance from it, then maybe you should consider changing your day-to-day. -day. Whereas if what you're doing every day you love. You don't need any balance from it. They just, the worlds are meant to be blended. And hopefully your career is blended with your everyday family life, you know, and your personal life and vice versa. So to hear that, it's, ob it's obvious to me based on your craft and how, on how well you build. But to hear that and for you to share that, that that's really awesome. That's really awesome. Uh, I think Gary V says the same thing. He says, yeah. if you're not doing what you love, stop yeah. right now. That's it. And figure out what is it that you want to do that that's you love. It. It. Well, speaking of love, we like to have fun on this team, on the show. You obviously know that. Let's give the people a fun fact. What's a fun fact about you, Mr. Cody? Fun fact. Um, I went through different businesses, different careers. But I think, as you know, as I was very young, mm -hmm. and uh, I think as we just entered college, it was really funny. It was right around the 2008 and nine crash. I was walking around and saying, I'm going to be a developer. No matter mm. what happens, I'm mm. going to be a developer. So I just turned 40. Fun fact, 18, 19, I, I was walking around, you being a witness to that, mm -hmm. I was saying, I'm going to be a developer in New York City. Love it. Here we go. Here Love we it. are. Actually, it's a mutual fun fact. Gene's being very modest. What he, what he didn't mention is that right around that same time, him and I started a development company. And we were 18 years old and we we're like, we know a lot of people. We're both really smart. Let's do it. We'll find land. We'll put a team together. We both, we both know lots of people that have means. We'll put the whole thing together. We'll go to people and we'll say, you put up the money. We'll do all the work and let's do, let's do a development business. And for a year, we ran around doing this. 
pounding the pavement, and you guys will be shocked. You will be absolutely outraged to hear that nobody wants to be two young kids <laughs> with no money and no experience, millions of dollars. Can you believe it? The outrage. The outrage, the outrage, unbelievable, unbelievable. But it is very cool that, you know, Gene and I at that time, we tried this thing. We went our separate ways, trying different things and different ideas, staying friends the whole time, of course. And then all of a sudden, many, many years later, he's like, listen, I think I'm gonna give it another go. I've got this partner, I'm gonna do this building. I, you know, my real estate career is taking off. He's like, will you sell it for me? Of course. And then now, you know, I can't even remember how many years ago it was that. Was like, that was like 13, 14, 15 13, years ago? 14. Something think, like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And then here we go all these years later. Uh, what I want to tell you, uh, it's, what an honor it is for me to get to, to, get to work with the, both sides of the coin. A, someone who I really respect as an entrepreneur, and then also who's literally a brother to me. So, um, yeah, for yeah. anyone that might be watching the show, I'm obviously not at all biased towards this individual whatsoever. <laughs> the honor. All right, the, we got the guy. We got to move past the love fest. The honor. Fast. The honor is all mine because I have to say that part of my success for a very, very long time since the beginning of my career has been the Litvak team. Oh, thank you. Man. Because you guys have sold, rented, and done all the comps and everything that I needed. It was a phone call away. Hey, Litvak team please, I need X, Y, Z. And within 24, maximum 48 hours, it was turned around. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. We love you, man. We love working with you. All right. So ultimately, over 100,000 people are going to watch this show. And the, the viewership will be eclectic, right? We are going to have other developers watch this. We're going to have people that are thinking about development watch this. We're going to have real estate agents watch this. We're going to have consumers watch this. We're just going to have people that follow us and get our newsletter that I don't know what they do watch this. So I thought what could be a really great idea is new development is always this sexy, cooler talk topic. And I feel there's a lot more myths than facts around this cooler talk uh, topic. So I thought what we could do is unpack some do's and don'ts, some, some experience directly from someone who I think is a really great developer. So let's start there. You know, for someone that might be thinking about going into new development or maybe someone that was unsuccessful with a project, in general, let, let's think like new development 101. When you are approaching buying a project, when you're doing your underwriting, as you evaluate what's a good and what's a bad project, I'm curious about that process. How do you approach your decision making about taking a project on? So so I think first off, it's financials, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, we look at price per foot. We look at what's sold. We look at what we think is fair. <clears throat> if we say, okay, this is a great, interesting deal. And we start honing down on, you know, I'll uh, uh, see what was built in the area, preferably on the block. I'll pull the geotechnical report from DOB because it's all uh, part of uh, public information. Is there rock? Is there water? What am I going to anticipate, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of times the ownership is not going to let you do a boring test, you know, and see water levels and so on, right? Because they don't want to be tied down to something that they have no control over, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll say, oh, well, I want to do this and I'll buy it depending on X, Y, Z. No one wants Sorry, to just for, for someone that's watching this, I may not know, can you explain what a boring test is? Sure. It's a test where a company comes in and they drill down into the ground to mm -hmm. see what kind of, uh, uh, you know, is it sand? Is it clay? Is it good material, bad material? Uh, also very important is for foundations, how, how deep is the water level, right. right? So all of these things matter, right? Because God forbid, if there's water, you may have to do, uh, you know, piles to support the foundation. Right. That's expensive. Uh, so there's all of these little things that we look at prior to, or we try to obviously get as much information as possible mm -hmm. before making a decision of purchasing a specific lot. We also call the architect and say, hey, let's look over the zoning. I will pay for a zoning analysis. A lot of people don't. I want to get a good architect and nobody wants to work for free. Sure. So I want to get the best information. So we pay for that. Mm -hmm. I call my attorney. I say, hey, take a look at this land. Are there any issues? Are there any lawsuits? Are there, is there anything going on that I should be aware about? You know, so we do all of these things to 
to try to figure out if this is a good deal. Let me do everything simultaneously because nobody's going to be sitting around waiting right. for me. Right. Right. A lot, a lot of times, you know, we try to find land off the market. So there's not a thousand people running sure. after them and sure. throwing offers at it. Right. right? So yeah. recent land that I bought, uh, from, uh, uh, just now we just quote, you know, about it, yeah. uh, in prospect Heights, we bought it from an auction. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I believe we bought it really well. Yeah. We bought it, you know, maybe 60 to $75 below market value yeah. that that for me is a steal right yeah. because i know that i did something well yeah so i didn't have a chance to do a boring test but there was a building next door which was brand new about 10 year old about 10 years we call sure. it brand new right sure. Sure, so i sure. pulled that and i pulled other ones and i was like okay cool well things look okay you know so i was like okay let's move forward in right. preparation to the bid you know we were looking and doing all that uh, uh, homework and research. Right. So I think very important to do that. Talk to all of your, um, uh, talk to all of your, uh, uh professionals, your attorney, your architect, yeah, your engineers. Okay. And then all the little miscellaneous things come in. How close are the neighbors? Are they on the property line? Okay. Am I going to have to, how am I going to, how is my foundation going to work with their foundation? Mm. Can I pull their records to see if I'm close mm. enough? Am I going to have to, am I going to have to underpin them to secure their foundation for a new building that I'm building? So all of these things yeah. become a big deal, right? Because essentially, uh, uh, well, I've shared with you, but uh, I finished the project about a year and a half ago, which was a rental project um, in Flatbush. And there I had a lovely neighbor and she seemed like she really knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And it cost me a little bit over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars to deal with this neighbor between paying yeah. her, yeah. renovating her house and doing all these things. But it also cost me time because sure. until she got paid an extraordinary amount, she kept constantly calling the department of buildings rightfully so or not. Yeah. And it wasn't, she didn't care. She, yeah. at some point she just said, pay me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you mean it's not, so it's not, so it's not so easy, is it? It's not for, for, it's not, it's not, let me go borrow some money and play Legos. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping, here's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping the people that are watching this, the, the aspiring developer entrepreneurs don't look at this and get scared, but just understand uh, there's a reason why so many developers fail. There's a reason why this skill is so hard. Uh, you've also got to think about, you know, timing the market. Uh, one thing Gene uh, didn't mention that I just want to add is he always calls us for comps before he buys the building. That That's like a rookie 101 mistake. Let me let me just run my own comps. Let me figure it out. And as much respect I ha as I have for every developer in New York City, you're comps. not doing what we're doing out there. Break yeah. down of bedrooms. Sizing. Yeah, unit mix, all of it. Unit them, sure. mix, everything. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, if you're for the developer out there, either aspiring or active, uh, make sure that you have a real estate team that does this for you as a courtesy. Gene can call us with 15 buildings in a week, and we would underwrite every building for him. We wouldn't charge him a penny. He's, he's a dear client of ours. That's something that your real estate team should do for you, is support you when you're in your audit process, is support you in this makes sense or it doesn't make sense. Especially a developer that gets a good buy, it's really easy to over assume while well, I'm getting such a good deal of land, it's going to play out well in the market, but there could be something going on. This is a neighbor that's not selling well right now, or there's an influx of inventory. I mean, any number of things. So honestly, I think we could do the rest of the show just on anticipating a project, but let me synthesize it into this one, have your team in place, the architect, the engineer, the lawyer, the broker, have your whole team in place. And if you're an intelligent developer like Gene is, you say no to a lot more projects than you say yes to. You you should assume there's something wrong with everything and then do your due diligence expecting to find things. And then if you don't, okay, that's a pleasant surprise. Let's go, let's go and buy that one. But the, the sensitivity testing and that due diligence process is so critical. Once you're pregnant with this thing, that's it. There's no going back. The interest is running. The money's borrowed. Like that's it at that point. So let's, let's move. So, okay, you've done your due diligence, you've acquired the land, you've raised the money, or you've done it all yourself, whichever it is. Um, so now you're doing this project, just high level, let's say, let's call it three phases from 
you know, not every project needs to have the foundation. Some projects you buy and take over, some projects are from scratch. So let's call the first phase is you're getting started with the project wherever you're starting. Let's say the second phase might be the middle of it. And the last phase is, you know, you're topping off, you're getting ready to launch or whatnot. So let's say th those three phases very high level. I'm just curious, you know, do's and don'ts, tips of what to do or what to avoid in any of those phases you think most pertinent. Sure. Um, dot your I's and cross your T's before mm -hmm. you uh, get in the ground. Know exactly what you're doing. Make sure all the engineering, make sure you know where all the pipes are running all the electrical is going, make sure you have everything bid out, make sure you have all your contracts signed and uh, make sure that everyone has communicated and know what's going on. Because yeah. if you're, if you're, uh, if you get in the ground and you're rushing and you know, you're trying to do things, you're either going to make a mistake, going to have to go back, break something and alter it, which is going to cost you time and money. Obviously, probably time is the biggest issue. Uh, because in all of our projects, we put in, you know, some kind of redundancy in regards yeah. to instruction and money for that. Uh, but basically, you know, I think timing is the biggest thing you want to be in and out. You don't want to be sitting around because the longer you waste your time, the more opportunity there is for DOB to come by a neighbor to call, you know, anything can happen. So in, in, faster you, in every business, time kills deals in every kills single deals. business. So just make sure that, you know, your architect, your engineers, everything's done, you're ready to go. So when you get going, you're mm -hmm. going, you're concentrating mm -hmm. on building, not concentrating on finishing up some things. Yeah. Uh, um, so I guess that's, yeah. that's, that's one. Yeah. Two to, is, to your, your point in life, if you make a mistake, no big deal. You learn from it, you move on. In development, you make a mistake. It costs you money to redo the mistake. It can cost the project to stall. And every single day, the juice is running every day the interest is accruing so yeah man th this is one area i think you said uh to ch chop a thousand times or, or measure a thousand measure times, excuse me thank yeah. you uh Probably michael one. Riem on our team uses an expression uh he's our he's our head of ops he uses an expression that if a lumberjack has six hours to cut down a tree he'll spend the first four sharpening x obviously they mean the same thing yeah but it's like if you're getting ready to take on this monster of a project whether it's two units or 200 units the everything is in the planning you know overestimate over plan create redundancies i mean certainly, certainly. i also want to add before even getting going if you're just starting out and let's say you have a million dollars and you think that the million dollars this is what you need <laughs> take a project that requires half a million yeah with leave, your million. Leave, leave buffer yeah yeah for sure for sure i mean I, I, I can't stress that enough. <laughs> um, yeah. If you've let's ever leave, been, let's just, let's let's just, just leave, leave it there. Let me tell you something. If you've ever been on the investors, this has never happened with Gene, but if you've ever been on the investor side of a project and you get that lovely email with subject line capital call, it's never, ever, ever fun. And then you immediately know that's a developer. I got to think twice about because well, that means not enough reserve fund. Uh, no. I will tell you, it has happened to sure. me. I want to be very honest sure. with everybody here. And uh, it happened uh, in one case, which is COVID. Yeah, we had projects. Well, that's all going. different animal. Yeah, it's no, all but, different but, animal. But, but but it is a different mm. animal. But when you buy a project at the end of 2019, yeah. and you don't even know what the word COVID means. Sure. And then of they stop you in March, April and say you're not. A Eugene, I can't hear you. Oh, you're back. You know what? Instagram, Instagram is really good. I'm controlling my my daily Instagram. So the error, the error, the the, the, the limit thing popped up. Your actual limit for the day. I set it for 15 minutes a day. I thought the do not disturb it shuts that down. But Instagram, thank you for regulating my Instagram take. Appreciate you, boo. So I'm sorry you were saying COVID. So look, COVID. But, you know, you buy a project in the end of 2019, you have no idea what the word COVID right. means. I, I didn't know there's right. a word like that, right? And then, uh, I, you know, March, April comes, they shut you mm. down and they say you're not essential. Remember, like, if you're not essential, oh, you, can't, right. you can't build. You can go buy liquor, but you can't build buildings. 
<laughs> you can buy, yeah, for sure. You can buy liquor, uh, but uh, you know, I think you couldn't even go to uh, to a place of worship. Yeah. You can buy liquor, yeah. you can buy yeah, guns, yeah. That's it. but you know, That's you it. can't go to a place of worship. So, and you definitely so can't so go. reserve fund, right? So that, that that so reserve fund. Make sure you have enough money. That, that's Absolutely. really really important. Please. Anything else? Anything else? Like make sure to avoid this, or make sure to do this through any of the phases of the project. I'll be honest with you, every single, I keep thinking, okay, well, I've done 20 buildings. I've done yeah. 15 buildings. Okay. I know everything. I, there's nothing that can come up, which I'm going to be startled by. And there's always something <laughs> that happens in every project, whether it's, you know, some kind of a condition, yeah. some kind of a situation, too cold, too hot, sure. you know, like you get caught pouring a foundation and super cold. You got to, you know, there's additives and chemicals mm. and, well, I, I don't want to get too technical, but you know, sure. like, stuff always happens, yeah. you know, people can't work, people want to work. So yeah. look, at the end of the day, just be prepared. Yeah. If you have enough money for a million dollar project, do one for half a million. Right. I'm just using start numbers. Start there. Start, start there. Yeah. Start there. Yeah. You know, go through one or two, you know, feel comfortable, yeah. at least understand what's happening. Sure. Also, Department of Buildings. Well, anyways, let, let's move forward to the <laughs> next stage. To well, the next uh, stage. Well, yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, you said first stage, right? The next stage is your mid construction, yeah. you're, you know, you're trying to finish up as you're there, you know, start working, don't wait for anything, you do it in condo, file your file, mm -hmm. your uh, uh, condo book ASAP, right. right, you know, with COVID, with people being still at home and everything like that, right, people are relaxed, they're not working yeah. as fast. You know, you don't want to be caught waiting for a condo book to be approved. That's what happened sure. to me. Right. You know, just recently, you're aware you were the gentleman, your team was selling the building. Yeah. We were waiting for this condo book yeah. to be approved. Yeah. So that wasn't great, but I understand there's, you know, situations. So start that right away. Don't wait to pick your finishes. Hopefully you have your yeah. finishes or you're working yeah. on your mood board. Get that done right away. You know, and like, if you like something, stick to it. Don't let anybody deter you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you have a good team, like I have the Litvac mm. team, you can reach out to them and say, hey, I'm planning to do this, tile, finish, yeah. pa, 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 pa. What do you think? Within a couple of days, they'll get back to you. If you're doing that while you're doing the foundation, you have you know, some time yeah. to get that done, order it, let it come in. A yeah. lot of people order from different places, from Europe, from here, sure. from there, because sure. cost, you need time for that. Get that in immediately, yeah. so you see. So Plus, costs are only in, cost always go up. Get it now in six months; it's likely to be more expensive. Uh, you know, like I, uh, with the experience of COVID, and I go back to that. If you yeah. remember, after COVID relaunched, sort of right shortage of yeah. goods, yeah. everything went skyrocket. Yeah. You know, the piece of plywood was like seventy-five, eighty dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. That was unheard of. Right? Well, everything, and everything all else assets, went, right? All assets then, skyrocketed. Then, then when they had stuff. It just continued to go up. Yeah. Right? So if you didn't buy out your your goods, you didn't buy out, you didn't pay for it. You didn't, you know what I mean? You leave a deposit. You're screwed. That's it. Now you yeah. have a problem because you bid it at a certain That's cost, but it just went up twenty percent. That's it. So as you're as as you're mid construction, right? You're you're doing your superstructure. You've topped off and you're starting to close down, right? Close up because. Essentially, you know, when you top off, you're at basically 50%. Then mm -hmm. all the guts go in, right? Right. So at that point, you should have everything picked out, ordered, coming in. So when the plumbers are working, when the framing goes in, everybody knows what's going on. Because you don't want to have to, oh, this is not going to fit. We got to reframe sure. every unit or sure. whatever. Right. So those are the mistakes that I've made 10 years ago. And I thought I had yeah. time, which, you know, now, obviously, we've perfected and we've moved yeah. on and, you know, things have gotten better, you sure. know, so sure. start early, get things done, get everything picked out, file your, you know, your, your uh, condo book, make sure your attorney knows what he's doing, make sure he has a good relationship with the AG's office, make sure he's done this a bunch yeah. of times. Right. Do not go to a person who just started out doing this, no matter how little money they tell you they'll do it for because you're going to be the guinea pig oh my god if someone tells you i'm really cheap that's the person not to use that's you know I've, not to use. I, I've learned and and again through experience because yeah. when you're starting out you're trying to save you don't have a lot of money sure. that's why sure. i said if you can afford a million yeah. do a half a million dollar project. that's right that's but right. pay for the best that's it pay for the best attorney that's pay it. for the best engineers that's it. pay for the best people 
to make sure that you're getting the best. Yeah. Because if you're if you're not at your strongest, especially in the beginning, yep. you need to have the strongest people around you that can guide yep. you. Yeah, and man. they charge money. <laughs> do you know? Do you know? I, I saw this. Uh, you know, as I was growing up in the real estate and learning rebuttals and all that. My, one of my first sales mentors ever, you know, gave this rebuttal to us and it was in the form of a meme. And it went something like, if you think it's expensive to hire a professional, just wait till you hire an amateur. You know, oh, it's yeah. like, like, it's, uh, well, we've only got a few minutes left. Man, I could literally talk to you for hours and hours. I think there's so much value here. Um, let me say this. Let, let me first put out there uh, that this is a conversation. We can do 17 follow-up shows on it and if you're and interested I think we should. yeah sure. i totally yeah. agree so let me say this first how can people find you if someone's curious to have a conversation with you do you want to leave an email or your instagram or or, or if someone if, if there's somebody out there that's interested in investing with you building with you just curious to pick your brain how would you like to, sure. to reach out? I'll, I'll leave an email and they could reach out to me okay good i would gladly you know get in touch and you know have a perfect. conversation perfect and then, or, or feel free to reach out to me and I'll connect yeah. you guys, whatever it is. Absolutely. Let, let's close, let's close off with this. Um, just give me in 60 seconds or less, what are you seeing in the market? What are some of the trends you're seeing on your side? You know, on the developer side, what sort of, what, what's going on out there? What are you seeing? Uh, as far as on my side, I mean, yeah. people are still transacting. Things are getting better. Uh, land is uh, land has gotten you know cheaper mm -hmm. because lending has gotten obviously more expensive, and uh, right. for a while it didn't, but now it has shifted and things have gotten better. There's a lot of people in mm -hmm. trouble, so mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, there's I think there's definitely deals to be had, yeah. um, and you know, this is what we look for. Um, you know the abatement came back so a lot of people activated mm -hmm. and now there's a lot more uh, rental buildings being planned and being built mm -hmm. um you know i think with the rates coming down people are getting uh more excited and i think people are going to start buying i think also we need to wait until november 5th I, uh, I think everybody is uh kind of holding their breath whoever sure. you're voting for god bless uh, i just want this to be over whichever way it goes yeah because we need a resolve and we need to all come together and unite as a, as yeah. a country. Yeah. So, sure. well said. you know, at the end of the day, you know, I think people are, a lot of people are waiting for that. <clears throat> um, you know, the trends on my side, you know, I think, you know, it's moving to the more positive uh, direction. Market conditions you're saying are generally improving, especially with the rate change. For us. Yeah. For, for developers, yeah. I'm seeing a bit of a slowdown on some purchases and yeah. some rentals as I'm seeing, I have buildings which we're selling and which yeah. we're renting. Sure. That has kind of kind of slowed down, yeah. but I do believe that this is due to uh, our current situation. You know, it's November 5th. Sure. I, I think once we get past that, maybe a month after that into December, I think things will pick up, things are gonna be okay, right. people are gonna get comfortable with the outcome and we can push right. forward. Right. Right. Very cool. Well, Gene, thank you so, so much. I will certainly be reaching out to finish the last phase of the building and any other things uh, there to talk about. Your time is truly valued and appreciated. Uh, you have a great day, my friend. It is always, always a pleasure to uh, speak to you and to deal with the Litvak team. Thank you so much for all the support over the years. And I think we should do, you know, a more detailed uh, segments, uh, uh, you know, for, for the show, if people are interested. Love it. You can count on it, my friend. All right. Thank you so much. See you, brother. Bye-bye.